Hi scholars, Mrs. Seagrave here, and I have another great story for you this evening. The book is called Clever Jack Takes the Cake. The author of our story is Candace Fleming. Our illustrator, G. Bryant Karras. All right, Clever Jack Takes the Cake. One summer morning long ago, a poor boy named Jack found an invitation slipped beneath his cottage door. It read, His Majesty the King cordially invites all the children of the realm to the princess's 10th birthday party tomorrow afternoon in the castle courtyard. A party, exclaimed Jack, for the princess? His mother sighed. What a shame. You can't go. Why not? asked Jack. Because we've nothing fine enough to give her, his mother replied, and no money to buy a gift. Jack had to admit his mother was right. His pockets were empty except for the matchsticks he always carried. As for their few belongings, a spinning wheel, a threadbare quilt, a pitted axe, what princess wanted those? The boy thought a moment. Then I will make her something, he declared. I will make her a cake. From what? asked his mother. From the dust in the cupboard? From the dirt on the floor? I have a better idea, said Jack. And that same morning, he traded his axe for two bags of sugar and his quilt for a sack of flour. He gave the hen an extra handful of seed in exchange for two fresh eggs and he kissed the cow on the nose for a pail of her sweetest milk. He gathered walnuts, he dipped candles, and in the strawberry patch he searched and searched and searched until he found the reddest, juiciest, most succulent strawberry in the land. Delicious, said Jack as he plucked it from its stem. Then he set to work churning, chopping, blending, baking. That same night, Jack stood back to admire his creation. Two layers of golden sweet cake covered in buttery frosting and ringed with 10 tiny candles. Across the cake's top, walnuts spelled out, happy birthday princess. And in the very center, in the place of honor, sat the succulent strawberry. What a fine, fine gift, said Jack's mother. Jack grinned. Early the next morning, with combed hair and clean shirt, Jack set off for the castle, holding the cake proudly before him. Before long, he came to a blue speckled meadow. Perhaps I should pick a bouquet for the princess, thought Jack, just as four and twenty blackbirds rose into the air like a sudden summer storm cloud they swirled around the cake pecking, nipping, flapping, picking. Get back, hollered Jack. I'm taking this cake to the princess. Ah, ka, 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 cackled the birds. And as quickly as they had come, they were gone, taking with them the walnuts that spelled happy birthday princess. Jack looked at his gift. At least I still have two layers of cake. Ten candles and the succulent strawberry, he said. Holding the cake proudly before him, Jack continued on to the castle. Before long, he came to a bridge. Toll, a voice demanded. <coughs> Out stepped a wild-haired troll. No one crosses my bridge without paying. But I haven't any money, said Jack. The troll licked his lips. But you do have a cake. I'm taking this to the princess, said Jack. And just how will you get it there, growled the troll. You and your cake are on this side of the river. The princess is on that side. And my bridge is the only way across. Jack considered the problem. I will make you a deal. If you let me cross, I will give you half this cake. Agreed, grunted the troll. So Jack slid out one layer, and as the troll slobbered and gobbled, crossed the bridge. On the other side, he looked down at his gift. At least I still have a layer of cake, 10 candles, and the succulent strawberry, he said. Holding the cake proudly before him, Jack continued on to the castle. 
Before long, he came to the forest. No birds chirped here, no squirrels chittered. As if under a spell, the entire wood lay silent, sleeping. Only the wind seemed to whisper, beware, beware. Pulling the cake closer, Jack pressed on. The road grew narrower, the trees grew thicker, the light grew dimmer. Soon it was so dark that Jack couldn't see the cake in front of his face. Turn back, the wind whispered. Turn back. I can't, cried Jack. I'm taking this cake to the princess. And he reached into his pocket for a matchstick, struck it on his shoe, and lit one of the ten candles. The tiny flame cast a magical circle of light. In its warm glow, Jack carefully made his way forward, but the little candle quickly burned down and snuffed out. So Jack lit a second candle, but he had not gone much further before it too snuffed out. So Jack lit a third and then a fourth and then a fifth until the tenth and final candle flickered, fluttered, and sputtered to its end. As it did, the road widened and the trees thinned and the bright sunlight shone once more. Jack looked down at his gift. At least I still have a layer of cake and a succulent strawberry, he said. Holding the cake proudly before him, Jack continued on to the castle. Before long, he came to a clearing. Good morning, young sir, called out an old gypsy woman. Have you come to see Samson dance? At the sound of his name, a bear beside her rose up on its hind legs. I don't have time, replied Jack. I'm taking this cake to the princess. Then we shall make it a quick jig, said the gypsy, snatching up her concertina. Oompa, oompa, pleased the instrument. Shuffle, shuffle, kick, danced the bear. Tap, 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 went Jack's foot as he set down the cake to dance with his new friends. Gulp. Hey, cried Jack, that bear ate the princess's cake. Pachooey, but not the strawberries of the gypsy. Samson hates fruit. Jack looked down at his gift and for several seconds he was unable to speak. Finally, he said, at least I still have this, the reddest, juiciest, most succulent strawberry in the land. And holding the strawberry proudly before him, Jack continued on to the castle, across the drawbridge, through the fortress walls. Straight into the courtyard. What a sight. There, smack in the center of all the merry festivities, sat the princess on her velvet throne. A long line of guests stretched before her. One by one, they presented her with gifts, each more fabulous than the last. But even the most magnificent treasures did not seem to interest her highness. More rubies, she said with a bored yawn. How tiresome. Another tiara, how dull. Joining the line, Jack glanced down at his humble gift. And just what have you brought the princess, a guard asked from behind him. A strawberry? said Jack. The reddest, juiciest, most succulent one in the land. He held it out for the guard to see. That is a fine piece of fruit, agreed the guard, but I cannot allow you to give it to the princess. Why not, asked Jack. Because she is allergic to strawberries, said the guard. One taste and she swells up like a balloon. No, gasped Jack. Yes, said the guard. I'm sorry, but you'll have to give it to me. Reluctantly, Jack handed over the strawberry. Hmm. Now Jack found himself at the front of the line. The princess turned her gaze to him. And what have you brought me, she asked. Jack gulped. He blushed. He shuffled his feet. Well, Jack took a deep breath and knelt down before her. Your Highness, he began. Let me explain what happened. A 
and he told the princess about trading for the ingredients to bake a golden sweet cake just for her. He told her about the swirling storm of blackbirds, the wild-haired troll, and the dark, dark wood. He told her about the old gypsy woman and her concertina and the bear who loved to dance but hated fruit. And in the end, said Jack, I still had the second strawberry, but the boy sighed. You're allergic to strawberries. He waited for her to yawn. So the guard ate it, he concluded. The princess laughed and clapped her hands in delight. A story, she exclaimed, and an adventure story at that. What a fine gift. And then the princess rose from her throne and proclaimed, time for birthday cake, and my new friend Jack shall have the honor of cutting it. The end. Well, that was a fun story. Clever Jack takes the cake, and he sure did. What a great gift. I have to tell you, I love a good story. I hope you love a good story too. We will see you tomorrow night, guys.